this um, story about Lazarus is filled with a lot of questioning, a lot of efforts to try to understand something that is not easily understood. And it's something that is so enveloped in the realm of mystery that it does take tremendous faith to believe it. It says in the scripture, when Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. He has been dead for four days. It seems to be a common understanding. Lazarus was dead. It's a common understanding that when you're dead, you're dead. You're no more. Maybe a memory. Maybe even someone of some minor significance in history. Think of all the people that have died in an estimable number of people, known and unknown, dead, gone. Death seems to be absolutely final. It's the end of the story. And whether the story survives or not is a matter of questions. Some people are remembered, some are not. Some are easily forgotten. Some kind of remain on in some way, shape, or form. It's really kind of depressing when you think about death. It's not a cheerful kind of thing. We don't want to die. I mean, that's pretty much where every human being is at in trying to understand that. However, we're a people of faith. And there's something about us that's different as a people of faith. Something that seems to be a contradiction because we have the boldness to believe in eternal life. When everything in this world seems to be at odds against that, even that says something special. Even that says something that we are separate from everything around us in the world, nature, whatever you want to call it, the universe. Something that seems to be indestructible that we call the soul, give it a name. And so it is said here in the scripture, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. There's an element of doubt in that on her behalf. If you, if you, if you were here, you wouldn't have died. Why didn't you know that he was going to die? Why did you delay so long? There's just a lot of questions that she probably has. And that's honesty. And so we see this, this story unfolding. And then there's the people around the so-called gathering, the crowd, whatever you want to characterize it. And they express their doubt in this way. Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died? Who does he think he is? He didn't do something. Why didn't he do something? Is he who he says he is? Doubts. Doubts and questions. But very honest doubts and questions. This situation, this story of Lazarus, this situation is strange. It is strange. Yet compelling in the realm of supernatural mystery. It's compelling. For some reason, it resonates with us as a people of faith. It's compelling. And we give it a name. Supernatural. 
something above nature, something beyond nature, something other than just what we see, what we sense with our senses, something that's just beyond our reach that we yearn for. Supernatural mystery, we can call it that. And so in this situation, what we see, there is emotion, very intense emotion, confusion, and questions and doubts. That somewhat characterizes life in general. But again, we're a people of faith. And then there's this. In all of that confusion, emotions, doubts, questioning, all that was going on, seemingly chaotic, then there was this. Lazarus was raised. Something unexpected. Something out of the ordinary. Something that no one would really have imagined happened. It would probably have been quite stunning to have been there. And not only that, Jesus wept. Why did he weep? He wept. And then after, when he, after he wept, he said this, Lazarus, come out. Untie him and let him go. At that point, there were no more questions. There were no more doubts. This dead man was alive. That was unexpected. That was seemingly impossible. How do we explain that? There is a way. There is a way. It's the key. I guess we can call it a key. It's something that we're not frequently reminded about. And it's simply this. There is no time with God. That's hard for us to imagine. How can we even say that? There's no time. There's always time. Well, there's no time with God. And we can't imagine that. We can only believe it. God can do anything. Nothing is impossible with God. So how do we explain this further if there's no time with God? It comes back to Jesus. Who is this man? Who is this Jesus? This is what we believe. Jesus is human and divine. How can that be? How can he be both? We don't have an extremely detailed explanation, but we believe it. It's amazing that we believe it. When there's everything in the world that would bring us to doubt that, we believe it. Jesus is human and divine. At the same time, Because he says this, in the midst of this chaos, in the midst of a, of a dead man that's now alive, he says this, I am the resurrection and the life. So how do we explain that? We probably give it a name. We can give it a name. We, we, we can say this. It's a dynamic tension. Well, that doesn't mean anything right off the bat. A dynamic tension. But that, that's the name we can give it, and we can explain it this way, a, a dynamic tension. There was a dynamic tension between his humanity and his divinity. That's the beauty of it. A dynamic creative tension between his humanity and his divinity. Was that a conflict? In some ways it was, yes. It was a conflict. The man on the cross, the man that rose from the dead. A dynamic tension. This dynamic tension, this emotion and supernatural power. Emotion and supernatural power. 
This is Jesus. And so this is a tension that we know something about. This is the tension we know something about. The tension between the body and the soul, that's us. Jesus was like us. But think about that. The tension between the body and the soul, this frail, vulnerable, temporal body, it's not going to last forever. And then there's the soul. The soul will live forever. And then by faith, we believe there will be another body. That's a dynamic tension. And we deal with it well because we're a people of faith. We have that tension. And we should rejoice in that because Jesus shared that with us. Because he says this, which is another key to the mystery. Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me. That connection. God the Father, God the Son, and then God the Holy Spirit. He hears me. And so there was a saying that someone said, said that kind of sums it up. A mighty maze, a mighty maze, but not without a plan. That's life. It's a maze, isn't it? It seems like a maze. Twist and turns. Don't know what's going to be around the corner. Don't know what's coming next. It's a maze. But part of the mystery is this, and it is supernatural. A mighty maze, but not without a plan. And that's what we believe. Amen.